Hello and welcome to the review of Sharp's EQ series from the 2022 TV lineup for the European market. Ranging from 50 to 75 inches and offering full aluminium design with Quantum Dot technology, Dolby Vision support and Android TV 11, Sharp has positioned this series in the very competitive area with models such as Samsung's BU8000 and LG's UQ8000. Sharp describes the EQ series as the new alternative in the premium class, so let's see what this TV has to offer. The EQ series has two models which are different only in terms of design. EQ3 comes in black and EQ4 that I've tested comes in silver. For the Polish market Sharp is using different model numbers, EQ6 is black and EQ7 is silver. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. For this test I got an EQ4 model with the smallest screen size available, 50 inches or 127 centimeters. Despite having a very slim frame, the use of aluminium for the bezel and the stand together with metal back cover ensured my good impressions during the installation. The TV is well made, rigid and the top bezel is almost perfectly straight when looking at it from the side. You will need a screwdriver to assemble the stand or you can hang the TV on the wall using standard Visa mounts. Wired connectivity offers a total of 4 HDMI's with port number 1 offering EARC support, then there are two USBs, Ethernet, Toslink, 3.5mm analog audio output, antenna and satellite inputs, analog inputs using the supplied adapter, microSD card reader, service port and a common interface. Wireless options include built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and both were working well during the test. Sharp introduced the first Android TVs in 2020 and back then during the test of the BL5 series I was almost fully satisfied with its implementation. According to DisplaySpecifications.com it seems that Sharp used Android TV version 9 for its 2020 and 2021 models. EQ series is using the latest version 11 and although there are no major changes, the platform is fast and stable and is still number one for those who want the widest range of apps. Currently over 7000 are offered in the Google Play Store. You will also get Google Assistant for voice control, Google Chromecast for casting content from your phone to the screen, as well as Google Stadia support. During several weeks long test, I haven't noticed any issues with stability, skipping frames during video playback or apps crashing. You will get two remote controls with the EQ series, one standard infrared and another one with Bluetooth connectivity that has a built-in microphone. Both remotes share the same style with a combination of plastic and rubber buttons and with four dedicated buttons for video on demand apps. It is nice to see a YouTube dedicated button. Volume and channel buttons are designed in a similar way as on Samsung remote controls, but you cannot push them down for additional options. Still, I was happy with the supplied remotes. In the picture quality department, after analyzing colors using Portrait Display's Kalman software, checking several test disks and watching content from different sources, I'm happy to report overall good performance from the new EQ series. Compared to the BL5 series I've tested two years ago, EQ4 delivers higher quality HDR picture, it's got better color accuracy before and after calibration, better motion resolution, and additional picture controls such as motion interpolation and ambient light sensor. What is interesting is that on Sharp Europe's product page for this TV you can see technical details such as peak brightness and color gamut coverage values which is something other manufacturers are not usually revealing. Did my unit reach those values? Yes it did and with a surprising accuracy. Peak brightness was 495 nits and sharp stated range between 450 and 550 nits. BT.2020 color gamut was between 76 and 80% and sharp stated 78% and DCI-P3 gamut was between 92 and 96% and sharp stated 94%. 
So either I was lucky to get a unit which has average values exactly as Sharp specified, or the production process is that precise. In any case, kudos to Sharp for being open about the actual performance of their TVs. Hope other manufacturers would follow this example. With that being said, EQ4 delivered a stable picture with accurate colors, with good upscaling and motion resolution, which is as expected for a 60Hz VA panel. Not great, but at least there are no long traces or new colors behind moving objects, as was the case on Sharp's BL5 series. Global dimming is not implemented, so the image remains with constant luminance regardless of how bright or dark the scene is. The exception is Dolby Vision content where from scene to scene you could see variations of brightness. For example, when a subtitle remains on the screen and the scene changes. There is no local dimming, but peak brightness is high enough for details to remain visible in brighter environments. Even though in Spears and Mansell test content mastered at 2000 nits or higher, I did see lack of details in highlights. While watching the actual content, such as Mad Max Fury Road on UHD Blu-ray disc, I haven't noticed that EQ4 was hiding the brightest details. On 1000 nits content, the tone mapping is done in such a way that bright details are preserved, which together with the wide color gamut makes watching HDR content a pleasant experience. TV has high ANSI contrast of 6000 to 1, which gives a good dynamic range and black level is quite convincing while watching content in a dark environment. The only thing that could distract you is the dirty screen effect that was visible on my unit, but just like backlight uniformity, these effects vary from unit to unit. Coming to gaming, even though ALLM support for some reason was not working, I had a good time playing games on this TV. At maximum you will get 4K 60 frames per second HDR images and with measured input lag of just 13 milliseconds with game mode activated, the response to my controls was instant, without any delay. You can also get full color resolution if you enable PC mode within the picture mode settings. For more details about picture settings, check my video linked in the description. Related to sound, TV uses hybrid Harman Kardon speaker configuration where tweeters are front firing and woofers are down firing. The sound quality was good, but I cannot say that the improvements were audible compared to other TVs in this price category. In any case, for the best result I recommend an external audio system. ARC connectivity was working fine during the test and I was able to get multi-channel audio to the Denon AV receiver. Sharp Europe's EQ series is the best TV from this manufacturer in recent years, offering for the first time Quantum Dot technology, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support and picture quality that is on the same level as what competitors are offering. Aluminium design, two remote controls, low input lag and fast and stable Android TV 11 operating system are its additional strengths. There are still areas which Sharp needs to improve like their unique option to turn off HDR, which still doesn't work correctly, and strange behavior of certain picture options disappearing as I wanted to test input lag. But with the progress I saw on this model, I'm definitely excited to see Sharp's 2023 TVs when they arrive. As I will continue to test mainstream TVs from this year's lineup, consider subscribing to my channel to find out what other manufacturers are offering in my upcoming videos. And that's the end of this review. Big thanks to company Ronis for sending me this TV for testing. Please check their website at ronis.hr. Thanks for watching and have a great day!